Okay. Let's get started. Um, so obviously it's going to be a very intimate discussion, and so the, the, I guess the benefits of that is that I can come sit at the table um, after I go through, through some of my slides, and we can ask, um, answer really specific questions that you have um, about your particular camps and situations, so um, we can take part of the agenda to do that. So my name is Matt Sagawa, and I'm the CFO of the Drupal Association, and I know a fair bit about financial planning and budgeting, but I've only been with the association for six months since uh, March, so I'm totally new to the community, and I mean, I, I love it, and I, um, I'm new to, to Drupal, um, and it's a, it's a great industry, but you know, I don't really know about running camps, and that's why we have Ben here. So Ben, maybe you could give just a quick intro. Okay. Yeah, so um, we sort of have two parts of the agenda. This presentation, which is because of my experience, is going to mostly focus on budgeting and sort of the financial aspects of the camp. And then I'm hoping we get a good chunk of time at the end to answer your, your questions. And I suspect that's where Ben will come in and um, that's where a lot of the interest will be, I think. So. I'm going to start out with some principles of budgeting, and depending on your experience, some of this might be basic uh, and, uh, and common sense, but nonetheless, it's, it's good to get a, a good reminder. So I'm going to be going through these principles here. Um, the first is just be conservative, uh, especially if this is the first time that you've um, done a camp. Um, obviously, you want to be as realistic as you can, but being conservative also means that where there's uncertainty and um, uh, a difficulty to predict uh, volume, for example, which is where your revenue is going to be, if you're selling tickets or you're um, uh, getting sponsorship proceeds, that's very hard to predict, especially if you're doing it for the first time, um, even if you've done it for many years. Um, at the association, we run these, these conventions, and we have a lot of volatility. Um, so because it's hard to predict, you want to be more conservative in your revenue projections. And expenses are a little bit easier to, um, to project. You, you sort of know what you're going to, you're going to get. But um, you should still uh, be conservative there as well and sort of err on the high side. And regardless of that, you want to make sure that there is space in between your revenue and expenses, right? You want to have a, if you can, you can have a, have a profit because that can help to offset anything un unexpected that happens. And, you know, with these kinds of events, things do um, happen. And if you're running it for the first time, um, you might just completely forget or um, omit a very significant, you know, budgeting item, right? And that can come, that can hit you pretty hard. The other is, uh, to the extent that you can think about any external factors that influence that might affect your event, so some of you might have um, people coming across the border. There might be exchange rate risk. Um, you might have other events that can reduce attendance at your at your event. Um, different things can can happen depending on the situation of the country that you're in. So you sort of want to plan for that. Plan for the for the worst. Uh, next. You want to have a, a leader, somebody who's going to be uh, in charge of your, um, obviously, of the, of the camp, um, who's going to be ultimately responsible, but you also want a team, right? And the, the more diverse and experienced your team is, the more you're going to be able to leverage them uh, when you are running the camp. So make sure that you actually, if you do have a team, uh, work with them when you're actually building the budget. I think that's very important. Um, and if you work with them and get input, they're more likely to help you actually execute on the budget uh, in a successful way, right? And be motivated by, um, uh, by the budget itself. So another thing with budgets is that the first time that you put one together, uh, it's 
I mean, all forecasting, all budgeting is wrong, just right, just as a principle. It's, always, it's going to be wrong, no matter what, right? It's just a matter of how much. And when we, uh, I've done budgets in the past, we usually go through a, a very iterative uh, process where we might be getting input from everybody and then we'll roll everything up into a report, circulate that, get input from um, you know, teammates and other stakeholders, and then you're gonna go back in and uh, revise, right? So you wanna allow yourself some time to look into their, to the parts of the budget that are especially uncertain, um, and also focus on material um, line items in your budget, right? So for this, con for these uh, big conventions that we do, I know, for example, that uh, the venue and catering expense is a huge percentage of the budget, right? So you, if you wanna focus on something, you gotta focus on those, those budget lines um, that drive a, the biggest proportion of your expense, right? So that 80-20 rule really does apply um, in finance. Um, okay. Also, documentation, uh, uh, very important. I think this is you know, sort of like common sense, but a lot of times when you're um, creating your budget, uh, you, in the moment, might think that you understand the assumptions behind a particular projection, but then you get to, you know, three or four weeks later or even longer, and you can't remember, you know, what that was about, right? Also, um, it's, that's helpful in terms of communicating with your teammates, um, and if you're going to be doing this next year, you're going to want to be able to look back in a year uh, and understand what, you know, what the, the heck you were talking about in your budgets, right? So be very specific. So the budget is a planning tool, but it's also a communication tool. It's a, it's a tool that can be used to um, make sure that you execute uh, effectively, um, and it's also, um, uh, it's also can be motivating as well. So make sure that uh, once you do finish the budget that you actually have a meeting so that everyone can get aligned on all the assumptions and all the objectives so that when, when your different team members are out there doing, <coughs> executing on different things in your, in your um, camp plan, um, that they are sort of equipped to adhere to, to the budget, right? Okay, so I'm gonna review um, a sample budget, and actually uh, I made a template, it's really simple, and the assumptions are, I mean, they're totally not real at all because I have no idea what would go into a, a camp budget. Um, but uh, it's, it's up on Drupal.org in the Drupal Camp node, and I, I've got a link to that in, in the presentation. Um, but it's, a, it's just a very simple budget, and it follows some, some key principles that I think are very important. Um, can you guys tell me how experienced you guys are with spreadsheets? Like, who, who would consider themselves a beginner with spreadsheets? Oh, uh, moderate use? Advanced? Okay. All right. I would consider myself advanced, but I don't do VBA or anything like that. Uh, but spreadsheets, um, you know, are, are, I think, probably also like doing good code. Um, they're, you know, they have to be scalable, user-friendly, uh, and error-resistant. And all of these things, um, those next bullet points are all sort of in service to, to those attributes, right? So you want to have in your spreadsheet separate tabs for your inputs and reports. Um, you also want to make sure that the format is as standardized as possible, um, including your, your formula, formulas. And, and the reason is uh, is really preventing errors, right? So if you've got all of your um, tables and reports in one spreadsheet, right, they're going to have different column uses, and um, if you're not being consistent with the way you're putting in formulas, then you can't just drag things down. You know, you, um, it, it becomes very, very difficult to manage, right? And do, does, anybody, does everybody understand what I mean by don't hard code within a formula cell? Who doesn't understand? Um, so what I mean by that is, uh, so it, within spreadsheets, you have formulas, right? You can do you know, B6 times C6. 
So by hard code, I mean don't put B6 times 20 within the cell, okay? Um, you don't want to do that, and I'll, I'll sort of show you why. Um, and then control checks are basically just um, alternative ways of doing a calculation so that you know, that, so they can validate the cell that is actually doing the calculation, right? And um, I'll show you an example of that. Okay, so this is a uh, um, example of having separate tabs. So in that sample template that I created, I've just got four tabs, it's really simple. Um, there's a separate reports tab, and then the other three tabs are, um, are input tabs. And <clears throat> the input tab uh, for ticket sales, for example, is pretty much exactly the same format as for sponsorships, right? Just really simple, um, but you can get, you can add a lot of scale and complexity to something as simple as this, provided that you keep everything very clean, right? So even within a spreadsheet, you wanna make sure that your input cells are separated from your formula cells. Um, so <coughs> by doing that, um, if you look in you know, columns B and C, price and quantity, there's no formulas in those cells, right? Those are just input cells. You put your values in there um, and you can change them very easily. You can do scenarios um, and you make sure that they're separate from your formulas, right? So in that formula column, it's just a simple formula and you can drag that down or if you um, put refer absolute references in it, you can make them, um, you can peg them uh, to certain fields so that you can do, um, you can replicate your, your formula cells very, uh, very easily, right, and very quickly. So this is an example of the expense tab, and this is also an input tab. <clears throat> and so the first column, you've just got your, your vendors. I've added a, uh, a category column. So this is help for, helpful for your reporting. Right? So you can break things down by large categories in your budget and then roll them up by using a pivot table if you know how to do that, or some ifs, or VLOOKUPS, um, um, and that makes it easy to do that, and it can be quite useful. The other thing to note about this is that you, you can put in percentages. Right? So again, this is all very basic, but um, it's helpful just to get a sense of what is the mix of your budget um, in terms of the actual dollar size, right? So I know here um, how the 80-20 rule is actually imp impacting my budget, right? And here's an example of the report tab. Um, very simple, this is basically an income statement or a P&L, profit and loss statement if you're familiar with, with reports. But it's, you know, they're, they're, it's not rocket science, it's very, very simple. Uh, but this will just show you um, you know, the difference between your income, which are potentially your ticket sales and your, and your sponsorships, and your expenses, right? Whether or not you are generating a profit. Generally, you, you do want to do that, right? Um, and then I've got my reporting categories in there from that expense um, tab, and, and I'm able to roll up all the expenses under those categories. And here I'm just, I think I'm using some ifs within um, that template that uh, I created. And then the check totals, I'm making sure that um, the sum formulas are picking up all the rows, right? Uh, and, and it's something that can really easily happen, uh, even if you only have a few, few rows within your reports. Uh, if you miss a line item, uh, that's actually, that could be pretty catastrophic, right? One line item um, where your sum is not going all the way to the top, uh, and that can really screw you when you're, when you're <laughs> when you're doing your cash planning, right? And some of you, you know, depending on the complexity, the, the size of the camp, you might not need to do this, but this is just a very simple example of a, of, uh, of a uh, cash flow, a cash flow template. Um, and to the right of this, I've got, um, I've got little inputs where you can put the percentage of the expense that lands in what month, right? Because if you're just planning everything in a big block, right, in a single column, you don't know what the timing of your payments are, right? But 
you know, depending on your payment terms or when you're actually collecting your proceeds, you could be out of pocket for um, some of the expense. Uh, and, um, and in that case, you're going to have some, you need to have some sort of funding, right? And that's that beginning balance, right? It assumes like it could be your own cash, it could be cash collected from the community, whatever, right? Um, but that can't be zero if you're going to be paying cash out, right, in advance. Um, so you can see a couple of, of uh, there's a couple of months, right, in the, um, the month, the three months leading up to the event and within the event month itself, you actually have negative net cash flow. Um, and you want to know when that's going to happen, right? And even after your event, you could have cash coming in or cash leaving. Uh, so if you just plan everything against one month when the event happens, you're not going to replicate the reality of how cash is moving in and out. Um, and as Chris can attest, as she's, you know, uh, she manages, how many camps do you make? 32 camps. Um, and she's managing the inflows and outflows, uh, and we're actually holding the assets, the cash, as it comes in, and we're making the payments, right? So we got to watch, and all those are all those um, camps are actually um, fields within our accounting system. Okay. Any questions about this part at all? No. Nope? Okay. Okay. So uh, managing finances before your camp. Here's some of the things we, uh, we can go over. <clears throat> Um, not going to get into a ton of detail here because really all of this, um, as Chris was uh, describing before, depends a lot on the countries that you're actually going to host um, the camp in, right? But there are banking laws, there are tax regulations, there's a whole host of stuff that um, you, you need to think about. So be, make, make sure you go to the websites of, your, of the tax authority, make sure you understand what the registration requirements are. Um, and what the thresholds are for, you know, the amount of dollars that are passing through your camp. Um, so there are a couple of options uh, with bank accounts. You know, you can open an account for the camp. Use a, you can use a personal account. Um, and then you can ask a sponsor to handle your money for you. And um, as I just mentioned, um, the association does do that for a fee. Um, we hold that the funds within our bank accounts, and then we handle a lot of the... Um, the financial transactions on behalf of, of the camps, so you don't have to worry about that. We do provide some reporting as well. Uh, so payment terms, um, this is really important, uh, and um, I think that my guess is that you know most camps are going to be smaller entities, um, and so that we're negotiating with your sponsors or vendors that you have to pay, you're going to potentially, you're always going to be the weaker party in the, in the negotiation. Uh, but the basic principle, obviously, is, you know, collect money fast, pay slow, right? But, if, you know, unfortunately, vendors and sponsors also know that and want to do that. And so it is a negotiation. Um, but you want to make sure that whatever payment terms that you negotiate in advance, on both directions, you want to make sure that those uh, work for you and you understand the implications. So that's that's a place where that that um, budget template that I made or your own template, that can be very useful because you can model that out, right? Um, also, uh, so I'm sure there are a lot of, of uh, techniques that um, you can use to uh, sort of motivate your vendors, or not your vendors, but your sponsors to, to pay. Um, but, you know, one thing you might want to do, for example, is if you've got sponsors, you, you might want to re require that they, act, they are paid in full before they set up at your camp or, you know, within a few weeks prior to your camp. So what you don't want is for them to have very little incentive to pay you once the camp is over, right? They've already, uh, you know, set up, accrued the benefits of, of uh, you know, attending the camp. So uh, track actuals versus the budget, um, especially think about timing. Um, and if you are sort of on the margin with your cash balances, you're going to want to be keep very tight control of the transaction activity that's happening, right? 
Um, here's an example of, uh, this is more of a, a report, um, you know, within that, uh, within that budget template. If you're doing, if you're trying to track the transactions as they come in, then you probably want to blow this out and do it, you know, add monthly columns. Uh, but here you can see, you know, what expenses are in control versus out of control. And then, you know, you've got your little favorable, unfavorable. You can put a formula in to tell you, you know, what's, what's in line and, and out of line. Okay. So after your camp, you're going to want to do these things. Um, so chasing receivables, we've already talked about that. Again, this is... Um, Really, really important. Uh, if you are, if you, if you've got a team, uh, it's probably a good idea to debt to uh, um, make somebody a dedicated resource for just going out and collecting on your receivables. Uh, you want somebody to be monitoring that closely and making sure that your sponsors, for example, are, are adhering to the terms that you guys set up. Right, and don't be afraid to. Send out reminders uh, before and after the due date, especially if they're, you know, you've got big receipts that you're depending on in order to make payments um, for your camp expenses, right? And a lot of times, um, this can take a long time to collect. So you got to manage your own expense, your own expectations around how quickly you can um, you can uh, collect, and you just got to plan for the worst too. So close your budget. Um, Make sure that you keep uh, a final record of your budget tracker and all the payments and expenses that you made. Um, and then report out to your community, right? Um, as an open source uh, community, we want to uh, make sure that we're doing that kind of thing. Here's an example of a report that you could share. It's super simple. Again, it's the income statements, but it's showing what actually happened versus your plan. and. Uh, and showing the, the variance to that. So also you're going to want to debrief. Um, you know, again, especially if you're going to do this, you know, you're going to do this again next year. Well, um, you know, any ways that you can minimize your expense the next time you do it because you're forecasting better or, you know, you're, you're um, fitting the, the needs of the camp more closely with with uh, what you've secured with your vendors, like the size of the facility, um, the you know how much catering you need, um, and that kind of thing. It's also um, it's good to know also what your variable expense is. Does everybody know what variable expense is? Yes, no. So I'll just explain it. So there's fixed there's fixed costs and then there's variable costs, right? And fixed costs basically don't change. Um, so it might be like speaker fees and that kind of thing, right? Those. It, they, can, they can be variable if you get more more of them, but um, they're not going to change with the volume of your camp, right? Um, if they're keynote keynote speakers, um, but catering, for example, right? You get if you get a lot more people than you expect, then your catering <coughs> expenses are going to go up accordingly, right? That is that's a variable <coughs> expense. Your facilities is sort of moves up in a step function, so it's a kind of a hybrid between fixed and, and variable costs. Um, and uh, um, so, you know, I think that, did that happen with this con as well? Our facilities expense went up? Okay. Yeah. And then, of course, catering went up because we got this influx of people who came in. It was great, but then we know that, you know, the extra ticket proceeds we sell, that's not all going to be, you know, cash to us, right? We're going to have to pay a portion of that out um, with the additional expense that we've incurred there. So that's it for, for my slides, um, but I've got that, um, the sample budget, um, again, on D.O. So, you know, you can go there and, and, down, and uh, make a copy for yourself and do whatever you want with it. And, and if you've got any questions at all about how to use it or feedback to make it better, just, just let me know. So that's it. So we can start talking questions now.
speakers we have, uh, like I said, we have two keynote speakers actually in hand if you want to, and they're fighting for the spot at the moment. Well, this week was kind of a battle for uh, you know, the to and come with the podcast today. Yeah. We have <coughs> to always have a break from some two speakers. Oh, okay. All our time, so you only have one and, and, and two chances. Thank you. 